EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program. We go out to all the enterprise tech shows, help extract the signal from the noise. This is EMC World 2016. It's actually our seventh year at the show. Uh, personally for me, it's my 14th year coming to the show. So lots of familiar faces. Happy to bring on as our first guest here on this set. Brian Gracely and I are welcoming a first time member of theCUBE and a new person to EMC, Josh Bernstein, who's the VP of Technical Strategy with EMC. Yeah, that's right. Josh, that's welcome right. to theCUBE. Thank you. All right, you will be joining an illustrious audience of thousands of people who we call CUBE alumni. Yeah. Everyone from uh, Michael Dell, who yep. happens to be being interviewed right now, John Cleese, Satya Nadella, and yourself. I know. You came from Apple uh, about a year ago That's to right. EMC. Give our audience a little bit of uh, understanding about your background, uh, you know, and what would bring you to leave Apple to join you know, EMC, uh, a storage company? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of working with some really talented people at Apple. Um, we basically designed and built the Siri infrastructure from the ground up from day one um, up until about the time I left about a year ago. And um, I wanted a different challenge. I wanted to do something different. You know, at some point, you know, it's year four and they're like, how many servers do you need to add? And you're like, ah, another 5,000 boxes here, 5,000 boxes there. Like, it was sort of rinse and repeat. But we went on an amazing journey. We ran the world's largest VMware environment um, and then ran what I still think is the world's largest Mesos containerized environment. And the one problem, you know, the engineering me, the one problem that kind of stuck with us was that um, at that time we couldn't figure out a good way to run persistent applications in our containerized environments. And we kind of punted and kind of worked around the issue. But as an engineer, I wanted to go solve that problem. Um, Brian and his team had, had created amazing work with EMC Code previously, and, and it was just a, I, I it was really passionate about solving that problem technically. And that, that's the biggest reason I came, was to do something different and to solve a problem that, that bothered me. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my, my co-host here, Brian Gracely, right, was a year ago yeah, with EMC, right. doing the EMC code team. I actually have some history. I was the like product manager for Linux back at EMC that's back great. in 2000. So I know f for a fact how many people knew open source over my time there yeah. and what's there. So talk a little bit about the, kind of the trend of open source and what's that mean to EMC? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that open source is always something that's been near and dear to my heart. Um, I think really what it comes down to technically, customers talk or people talk all the time, is it cheaper, is it better code quality, is it all these sort of very qualitative kind of, kind of ideas. For me, I think it's about integration, right? Open source allows me to take, um, to take software, consume software in a way that makes it easier to integrate with the rest of my environment. And as we move towards cloud native applications, as we move towards microservices, starting adopting 12-factor applications, the ease of integration is really what I think people care about in the end. And so that's why, that's why open source is important. And I think that if you look at our customer base, um, they want a solution that, that has real value. And so they're not necessarily just concerned about the fastest this or the largest this. They want to see how it fits into their environment. And the work that we do in the community around EMC code really solves that last mile, if you want to think about it that way. So I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, so I mean, you've been around EMC now for a year. Yeah. A lot of enterprise customers you get, you get access to. You know, one of the things I, you know, we talked about IT throughout the, the keynote today, and yep. one of the things was when you were at Surrey, Surrey essentially is a product facing. It's not so much an IT function, it's a, it's a business facing. Yeah. How much business facing conversations are you getting to have now uh, as EMC evolves, as Dell evolves, uh, that, that people want to know like, how do I do that digital business thing as opposed to just you know, IT more efficient? Yeah, I think I, I have that conversation probably nine times out of 10, actually. Um, Every CEO or every executive that I speak to has a customer-facing application or, or some sort of customer-facing support. Yeah. Um, so I have that conversation constantly. Um, and what Siri did was just, it was just another business application. You know, for an airline, it's a reservation system. For a, a, a bank, it's their, their app, their mobile app. Right, Siri was just, just another app in the end. Yeah. And so that's the conversation I find myself having all the time. Right. One of the things that, that your team's heavily involved with, you said persistence with containers, yep. persistence with, what does that mean you know, for, for somebody who's not living that every day? Give, sure. us, the, you know, give us the you know, one-on-one version of what that means and why it's important for this new world. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know, in the early years with virtual machines, we, we got uh, this idea that applications could be stateful or can store data inside the virtual machine. And when the, when the virtual machine needed to be moved or spun up or, or operated on, um, the storage or the data of the application kind of came with it. Containers are much more lighter weight, so you get a lot more agility out of things. They're a lot simpler. But unfortunately, that ephemeral nature, that idea that they, they don't persist or they don't kind of store state with them, makes migrating applications to containers relatively difficult. Yeah. 
So I felt like if we could solve that, that, that issue technically, um, if we could solve it operationally, uh, then we could really help customers move the ball forward into, into a third platform and into these container worlds. Because I don't think it's realistic to expect people to rewrite their applications all the time, right? Um, and some applications are never going to be rewritten. Customers run Oracle, customers run MySQL, Postgres, these databases. Why can't we run them in containers? And, and that's really what we're enabling with this. Yeah. Stu and I were sitting in the analyst uh, briefing this morning. Jeremy Burton was talking about uh, either OpenStack or some open source technology and was throwing around words, open source words, as if you know, he was at any meetup, right? Yeah. So talk about, just over the last year, how much has open source changed within EMC? How comfortable do you think they feel you know, in the executive team and, and out in the field? Well, first of all, Jeremy is the biggest supporter. I mean, I think that um, he, he's very passionate about this. I think he understands the, the, the value that it's bringing to his business. From a, from a community standpoint, we've contributed over 350,000 lines of code. We wow. have 48 active projects. We have 1,100 community followers in our Slack channel right now. Um, so I think that the traction that we've gotten and the interest has been tremendous. Uh, we've also provided a, uh, a facility for other people inside of EMC that have side projects to open source those projects through EMC code, um, through the Dev High Five program. And it's been, uh, the, the amount of support is just continuing to grow. It, it's been fantastic. Yeah, it's great to hear. It's great to hear. What, what you know, as, as you're here, sort of, last year you got announced on stage, yeah. as a new guy, you've been here for a year, you've got a lot going on. What's, what are some of the highlights for you that you're looking for this week and, and that you want people to go, you know, watch the next couple of days? Yeah, that's great. I think it's, um, I mean, hopefully you'll watch my, uh, my keynote on Wednesday. Um, but I think from a technical standpoint, I have a guru session on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Hopefully you all will stream it. Um, and we're really talking about how open source has changed the data center and how um, running persistent applications or, or um, stored state applications in containers uh, matters and why it matters. And I have my friend Toby from Mesosphere on stage with me then, and we're actually going to do a demo in front of everybody real time. Wow. Um, so I'm very excited about that. So, so Josh, you know, a lot of the people that come to EMC world, they're infrastructure people. Yeah, right. Can, can you help, you know, what's that journey from infrastructure to infrastructure as code? Yeah, I think infrastructure as code is, is sort of a subset of, of DevOps. Right, and if you kind of have to organize a little bit, DevOps is really this adaptation of a, a, a operational model, an IT operational model, where traditionally we have these silos of you know, compute, network, and storage that manage and maintain that environment. And when you adopt DevOps, it's all about um, tearing down those walls. And one of the ways by which you do that is through adopting infrastructure as code. Um, and it's this idea that I can declare my given state of infrastructure in software, and therefore I can apply software development principles to my infrastructure and operate much more efficiently that way. And so that, that's, that's why infrastructure and code is very important stuff like this. All right, so when we hear announcements about you know, Unity and yeah. you know, the latest converged infrastructure, yeah. how, how much does the work that you've been working on you know, make its way into stuff that looks more like traditional storage uh, products? I think that's great. I mean, I, I, that's a great question. If you look at the Unity platform, you'll have uh, some interesting surprises over the way that that platform is uh, put together and assembled. Um, but also that we, we still realize that there's plenty of people that want to leverage Unity with containers or leverage some of our other more traditional storage lines with containers. And a lot of the work we're doing around Rexray is really, uh, and the other EMC code products is really focused on that. It's about delivering a solution end to end and not just dropping a product off and, and helping people plug it in. Yeah, well, open source is always a little unusual for anybody who's used to commercial software. You, yeah. can, you can kind of track it, you can eventually figure out customers. Have you guys seen examples where, you know, uh, a company, a customer, a partner has gone, I'm using your software, I'm collaborating with you, and we're now starting to move it. You know, how, do you, how do you connect the software you're building to what's going on in the marketplace? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a lot of customers now that are picking up our projects saying, hey, we love this, we're really looking forward to it. Um, how do we maintain support for it? We like to pay for a support contract and things oh, like wow. that. And, um, and we're happy to have those, those uh, conversations. Some of the largest EMC customers are actually going down that right right now. They realize that um, the open source is key to integration, and if it delivers real value, then customers are actually volunteering wanting to pay for that value and, and looking for that commercial support. So I think that's the biggest yardstick if you can look at what's happened in the last year, is customers are coming back to us now and saying, hey, this, this one project I use every day, um, it's really critical to our business. Can you officially support it with you know, the world-class support that EMC has delivered for so many years? Wow. And so that, that's really exciting, and that, that's really validating. Yeah, and when you talk to those customers, a lot of them, you know, we, we see in talking to them, they're trying to figure out open source, right? So right. Capital One Bank or Nationwide or something. How do you help them take the learnings that you've had in the, in the EMC code team for them, for whether it's open source licensing, contributing, how do you help them a little bit? 
Yeah, a lot of the questions I get from those customers are, you know, what is it that I open source, um, and and how do I do it, and you know, why do I do it? I mean, I think that you open source something because you feel like you're bene you can benefit other people, and you can take benefit from those other people's interests. I think that's why you do something. You also do it because you want to make something consumable or easily consumable for somebody. Right. How to do it is, is a little harder. A lot of these organizations sure. don't have that. Um, we have a phenomenal program with EMC Code that helps our customers and internally at EMC do it. We've extended that to our customers now. Um, and, and, and so I think that, that that's why people are interested. You know, yeah. We're really helping, helping people kind of go through this journey. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give a plug for folks that, that go back to the Wikibon research side of things. Uh, we just did a big thing with uh, Northbridge Ventures, the uh, the future of open source survey. A lot of really good survey data that's in there aligns a lot to yeah. what you're talking about. Really, you know, where are customers putting open source into production? What are they thinking about? Right. But also, you know, what are the business models? So we're right. seeing people say, can I take open source and, and build a SaaS application? Should I go build a, an IoT device and so forth? What are you? What are you guys excited about the second half of the year? What do you? How do you think about roadmaps or the types of projects you should guys should try and work on? Uh, I'm very excited about our roadmap for the rest of the year. I think that um, you'll see uh, you'll see us integrate a little bit more clearly with the leading uh, containerized environments. Um, a lot. Of, one of the other biggest problems that I think customers have is you know bare metal provisioning on infrastructure. A lot of our customers, despite wanting to move to the cloud, have requirements around on-prem. Uh -huh. So there'll be a tremendous amount of work on that. Um, so I'm very excited about, about sort of making storage and making uh, containers sort of more palatable and more consumable for, for our larger customers. Yeah. So Josh, Josh, one of the things we've been seeing is the line between the vendor and the, the customers has been blurring. Yeah. You know, when we go, go to some of the open source shows, you know, they see the like of you know, GE and Nike and everything else, not only <coughs> using but you know, contributing, right. uh, presenting. Do you have any examples you can show? You, know, you, you mentioned your partner, your partner Mezos is going to be yep. uh, doing presentation Mesosphere, with yep. you. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, any other kind of the big end users that are kind of buying in uh, that you can speak yeah, of? Yeah, you'll see some of those on yeah. stage with us on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think that kind of validation is amazing. When you can work so closely with customers um, and they will voluntarily stand up on stage with you and, and sort of validate the work that you've done, um, I think that'll be, you know, that, that's incredibly rewarding. And you'll see those guys come up on Wednesday. Yeah. So, so one of the hardest parts about that is of course finding the people, and that's one of yeah. the reasons they participate. Yeah. How, how's the, the, you know, the job search go for people? I mean, it kind of the, the talent acquisition, how do you find the people, how do you train the people? For open source people? Yeah, for open source people. I mean, I think that's the interesting thing. Um, the community is a small place. We joke in, in the Bay Area, right? The Bay Area is a small place, and you, you know somebody, and you know somebody else, and this other person, and so, um, at least for my team, the way we've staffed up is, is who, who do you know? Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing about it is we're less interested in what's on their resume and sort of more interested in what's in their GitHub account or what they've done with the community or what, what their interest is. Yeah. Um, and that's a really great way to validate you know, key contributors and key engineers is, is what have you done lately? Yeah, Git, GitHub's I, the new LinkedIn for developers. Yeah, GitHub's the new LinkedIn, but you, know, you want to see what people have done and, and whether or not they're passionate, right? It's very right. easy to throw a bunch of projects up there and, and look like you have a nice resume. Um, but you want to select people that have a passion. And, and that's really what's been important to us, and that's why our team has grown so well over this past year. All right, so Josh, want to give you the final word. People want to you know, not only find, but contribute. Wh wh where do they go? Yeah, check us out on emccode.com. Um, if you're at the show, come see us in booth 1044. We have some really interesting demos there. And um, I'm excited. I'm very excited to be here. Great. All right, Josh Bernstein, uh, congratulations on all you've done over the last year. Looking forward to your keynote on Wednesday and all the sessions that there that will be there. We've got three days of live full coverage, two sets, uh, Dave Vellante, John Furrier, Brian Gracely, myself. We've got a new host, John Walls here, Jeff Frick's also here. So, you know, cast of thousands helping to bring the CUBE experience to EMC World 2016. Uh, stay tuned, we've got lots more coverage coming and you're watching the CUBE.